Welcome to the Abuki Cabal Show. What's happening, y'all? So I'm sure you guys have heard uh, about all this hubbub about Andrew Cuomo and his sexual harassment allegations. I thought, uh, spend a little time on this and uh, go through what uh, these allegations uh, are. Um, looks like he's got seven of them. You know, I, I'm of the mind that um, <clears throat> it's kind of funny that, uh, you know, after Trump got out of office, um, Quite a few of his uh, political enemies, and people who spoke uh, spoke badly of him, uh, are falling uh, upon misfortune. Uh, you know, Cuomo has got a little situation with uh, these allegations, and also the uh, the nursing home deaths. Um, got these these uh, women uh, who are. You know, making these allegations uh, against him. Uh, I'm going to go through a few of them and uh, see what you guys think. Um, Lindsay Bolin uh, is the first one. Uh, she says that in December 2020, uh, she was a former aide, New York, former, uh, you know, New York governor, excuse me and accuse him of sexual harassment and creating a toxic environment. Uh, I assume this is a toxic work environment. Uh, anyway, uh, moving on. At the beginning of March uh, 2021, Boylan further stated that Cuomo had forcibly kissed her in 2018. So why didn't we hear anything about this uh, when Trump was in office and, you know, maybe in 2018 after it happened, you know, maybe she could have, you know, pressed some charges or something, you know, but moving along, uh, the governor uh, denied these allegations, uh, in an interview and, uh, Ms. Boylan, Boylan, uh, stated that Andrew Cuomo, uh, propositioned her for sex, stating the following, the governor is trying to sleep with me. Hmm. So, uh, I guess with her being an aide, you know, I guess this would be, uh, you know, uh, a situation uh, where it would be uh, inappropriate. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm wondering why these, why, why are people taking so long to, you know, to uh, call out bad behavior by people uh, that is sexual in nature. Um, seems like we just keep seeing the same narrative over and over and over with regard to these allegations, uh, these, you know, Me Too type uh, allegations, this cancel culture type uh, type uh, activity that's going on. Um, I mean, if you're 
if you're, you're that upset about it, I would think that, you know, that you would go ahead and file charges against the man in 2018. You know, why, why are we hearing about this in 2021? You know, I just don't, I, I, it doesn't, you know, it just doesn't, doesn't feel right to me, but moving along. Um, you got Charlotte Bennett. She says in late, uh, well, it was in late February, 2021, that Charlotte Bennett, an executive assistant and health policy advisor to Cuomo accused Cuomo of sexual harassment, which included questions about her sex life. Hmm. Okay. Um, in March 5th, 2021, in a video interview with CBS Evening News anchor Nora O'Donnell, Bennett said that during a one-on-one -on -one meeting at the governor's office in June 5th, 2020, that Cuomo implied that I was old enough for him and he was lonely. Bennett went on to say that Cuomo's office director took the state's mandatory sexual harassment training for him. I was there. She said, I heard the office director say, I can't believe I'm doing this for you and making a joke about the fact that she was completing the training for him. And then I heard her at the end, ask him to sign the certificate. Okay. So, which came first, chicken or the egg? Um, did she hear this and then make the make the the uh, the allegations that he was, you know, trying to uh, to proposition her? Uh, sounds like he was asking her out on a date, you know. Um. Well, you know, something to that effect. I mean, uh, uh, you know. Uh, if this, I don't know, I don't, I, I, I don't want to really, you know, really pass judgment on it, just, it, but it seems a bit weak to me. I mean, uh, uh, all the sexual harassment training that I've been through is, you know, once uh, you have the initial encounter, you basically tell that person that the, uh, the, act, the you know, the uh, behavior that they're exhibiting uh, is unwanted and give them the opportunity to cease the behavior. So it seems like that's what happened. Uh, he asked her, said, made a statement one time and nothing else happened after that. So then you have this, this incident where, you know, she alleges that the governor didn't take sexual harassment um, training. I mean, <laughs> again, suspect. Anna Ruck, um, in early March 2021, uh, you have a third person, you know, uh, she's the third person and a member of the Obama administration who later served Joe Biden's presidential campaign said that Cuomo put his hands on her back uh, and was rebutted. I guess meaning that she rebutted him. And she removed his hand and then placed his hands. He placed his hands on her face and cheeks and asked her, asked to kiss her. A friend photographed a Cuomo touching her face. Okay. So he asked to kiss her. So then that's when you say no. And then he moves along. I mean, he's a man he's gonna be interested in in, in women and it's kind of obvious that he's gonna be interested in the women that um, he's around that he I mean some men are just um, ambush predators you know what I mean they just lay in wait you know and it's like when a woman comes along, I mean, if she looks, you know, kind of nice, then he says, hey, you know, um, want to go out for a drink? Um, can I kiss you? Uh, whatever the case may be. 
whatever the, you know, uh, whatever the relationship is and the amount of time that they have uh, times that they have come across each other or what type of relationship that they have uh, when seeing each other on a day to day or weekly basis. I mean, some of this kind of defies reason. Um, I can't believe that that this would even pass a human resources sniff test for allegations. Um, so we move on to the, the next person. This is the fourth one, uh, Annalise. On March the 6th, 2021, Annalise, a policy and operations aide to Cuomo from 2013 to 2015, became the third former aide to accuse Cuomo of sexual harassment. Liz and Cuomo said Cuomo called her sweetheart and touched her lower back and also kissed her on the forehead when standing up behind her desk. Okay, so (laughs) I guess this happened somewhere around 2013 to 2015 and we're just now hearing about it in 2021. I mean, we've had all kinds of other situations where people have been saying for the last, what, four years? Ever since the R. Kelly situation, the Bill Cosby situation, I mean, and these ladies didn't think that, hey, I probably should have said something. I probably should say something about my own situation that uh, that occurred by this, you know, high profile, you know, individual. But that didn't that didn't take place, you know, and I mean, how many times me personally, I mean, I've seen numerous times where people are out. And uh, when a person goes to speak with a woman, I mean, especially like, you know, if you're out at the club or whatever the case may be, or even if you're out for coffee, or whatever the case may be, you get you get close to the lady and you may put your hand on her. You may uh, um, show some physical contact, which would indicate that you are interested along with the conversation that comes along with that. And that's when the person has the opportunity or should take the opportunity to say, no, I'm not interested and move away. Okay. That's again, how this is supposed to work. I mean, men and women are going to have to uh, figure out a way that, you know, unwanted contact is rebuffed in a way that would prevent the types of, uh, toxic situations that are going on right now. I mean, women are complaining about, you know, uh, men not wanting to be around them, but this isn't helping. These types of incidents over and over and over and over again are basically going to tip the scales sooner or later in a way it's not going to be favorable to, uh, to you guys, you know? So, I mean, Someone's going to have to be logical about the things that we're we're seeing and how these encounters need to be handled, Um, whether it be training on the female side and the male side or, or something of that nature. But I mean, if it gets to the point to where men and women just can't be around each other, which we already know that attraction is something that is is just I mean, it's it's a natural part of life. But now we're making it to where it is. Uh, uh, seen as a negative and I mean it's almost becoming crazy but we'll move along let me try to get through these Uh, Karen Hinton um, she uh, said on the same day that Miss Liss accused Cuomo of sexual harassment Karen Hinton uh, a former press aide for Cuomo when she served as Secretary of Housing and Urban Development, also accused Cuomo of sexual harassment. She said that Cuomo called her into a hotel room and then pulled her back towards his body. Okay? Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's a lot of questions that I I would have to ask with this. I mean, hotel room? called her into a hotel room where they all at the hotel together. I mean, 
Okay. Again, an initial um, offer. And, um, you know, what happened after this? Pulled him back towards her body. Okay. Then what happened after that? Um, we have to think about this like we're, we're uh, you know, somewhat uh, like uh, someone who would be investigating these allegations. I mean, in order for us to look at this and say, you know what, is this, does this pass the smell test? And so far, you know, to me, uh, it doesn't look that way. Okay, so we got another lady and she's anonymous. So on March uh, the 9th, 2021, the Times Union reported an anonymous exec- executive mansion aide had accused Cuomo of calling her into his office, reaching under her dress and fondling her. Cuomo denied these allegations. Okay, so how do we prove that this happened or that it didn't happen? Um, I mean, this becomes, I mean, it's, it's becoming more and more convoluted as we, as we go along. Okay, so the last one, Jessica Bakeman, a former member of the Capitol Press Corps who worked for Politico, New York, wrote about the atmosphere for women in Albany, New York. Albany, New York, (laughs) sorry, uh, on March 12th for the New Yorker magazine website. Uh, She wrote that Cuomo had inappropriately touched her in 2012, 2012, ladies and gentlemen, at a holiday party in 2014. Oh, and at a holiday party in 2014 and made multiple humiliating comments during her time covering him. She wrote of an incident in 2014, keeping his grip on me as I practically squirmed to get away from him. The governor turned my body to face a different direction for yet another picture. He never let go of my hand. Okay, so He's trying to position her to take a picture and that's sexual. Hmm. And what, I mean, what was, what was the, the, you know, this atmosphere in, uh, you know, Albany. I mean, we're getting these, these vague uh, descriptions about um, a supposedly, you know, inappropriate atmosphere. Um, with regard to uh, the governor. Now, I can't believe that these people were around the governor and uh, nobody else was around. I mean, you can't even get close to the president. You definitely can't get close to a a state governor, especially not one uh, from New York. I mean, that's just like, I mean, that's like almost second to, to the presidency. I mean, he's got guys all over him to protect him. So, I mean, where are all these guys? They're they're constant pictures being taken and whatnot. I mean, people are rarely alone. So, you know, I'm just this is, you know, it's just more of the same. And uh, it's just getting to the point to where, you know, it's women want to be in these these positions. They want to be close to uh, to these high profile individuals. And what are we seeing? We're we're constantly seeing more and more of these allegations, whether it be uh, women being in the locker room, uh, you know, uh, being in places where men are generally um, not subjected to, you know, uh, uh, situations where they have to watch their every move when they're around, you know, uh, uh, people who are around them. But it seems like uh, more and more that we're getting um, people who are around these, these, these men and, uh, when things happen, uh, you know, it's an opportunity to oust the person without him going through due process. And, uh, I mean, like I said, we're, we're seeing more and more of this, you know, uh, the Cosby fiasco was, uh, I mean, was, was crazy. You know, you have people come and making allegations and no, uh, no way to back them uh, with any kind of evidence. You know, and if we're supposed to be, uh, you know, a country of laws, then uh, when these allegations are made, they have to be investigated and uh, in a logical way. 
And if there's no evidence, then you you, you cannot uh, take a man or a woman through that type of situation. Um, here we have claims. And then yet again, we have uh, a person uh, that is systematically being forced out of their job based on what a woman says, you know, and this is ridiculous. I mean, after a while, you're not going to be able to have anybody of any substance in any of these jobs, except for women, which I think is probably part of the strategy, too. I mean, um, we're seeing here, you know, especially now, it's, it's just more and more girl power, you know, more and more money behind, behind the women. Uh, let's put them in all these high profile situations and and more and more and more. And, you know, uh, men are being um erased from the landscape uh, but you know um, I, I don't know you guys let me know what you think in the comments and um, I'm, I'm very interested to think uh, you know to see what you guys think about it um, this is uh, this is definitely a wild situation you know you are listening to Abuki Cabal the analytical savage you guys uh, like, uh, share, and subscribe. And uh, thank you guys for uh, hanging out and, and listening to my uh, my ramblings. Uh, appreciate it. Um, like I said, uh, please like, share, and subscribe. I uh, appreciate it.